whenever there is a humanitarian catastrophe caused by war, weather, and natural disasters to the impact of such disruptions on health, education, and even basic shelter, humanitarian agencies around the world are there making a difference. Such catastrophes have heightened the need for substantive partnerships between humanitarian practitioners and academics. These partnerships help to develop highly professional responders, share expertise, and carry out research that generates action for those suffering from the impact of disasters. This is the unprecedented display of will shown by 100 academicians and humanitarian practitioners from around the world as they attend the Humanitarian Partnership Conference held at the Kenya Science Campus of the University of Nairobi, Kenya. So a similar conference like this was held in Geneva in October 2011 and it was spearheaded by Elwood. There were over 100 delegates at that conference ranging from academia to humanitarian um, practitioners. The Geneva Conference was organized by Enhancing Learning and Research for Humanitarian Assistance, also known as ELRA, and Geneva Center for Education and Research in Humanitarian Action, also known as CIRA, with the support of the Swiss government. The University of Nairobi, the Interagency Working Group IAWG, and Save the Children Kenya, in association with Enhancing Learning and Research for Humanitarian Assistance, ELRA, are hosting the first ever Humanitarian Partnership Conference in Africa. What I noticed is that there was very little representation from the Global South, as we call it. So people were having discussions and asking questions, so what happens in, in Africa, what happens in Asia? So, And I found that they don't really know what goes on here. There are so many learning institutions that actually do training in, in humanitarian uh, related aspects. And then NGOs, I mean, this is where all the action is. Actually, the NGOs and the academia looked and said, we're doing the same thing. Why don't we be more efficient and effective in doing it? So the NGO um, do want to capacity build. Of course, they have to, um, to continue to improve um, the way they respond to any humanitarian crisis or emergencies or even the issue of resilience and development. After that conference, I made a mental decision to ensure we have a conference in this region with local institutions, with local NGOs, and start engaging with each other because we haven't done that, I don't think, to date. And, not to, and if we have, it's been to a very small extent. World Vision and International Institute for Rural Reconstruction were key drivers in ensuring the success of the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me the pleasure to invite you all to the Kenya Science Campus of the University of Nairobi in this, uh, for this important conference on humanitarian partnerships whose name is bridging the gap, whose name is bridging the gap between academics and humanitarian practitioners. In his address, Dr. Enzo explored why academics and humanitarian agencies fail to work together and emphasized the need to build partnerships as opposed to consultancies between the academia and humanitarian practitioners. You know, let's not just talk about partnerships and what we'd like to do. Let's fundamentally start doing some of these things. It takes a lot of time to do research, yet it's the platform that we need to establish our programs on. So we can do faster paced research projects. We simply have to, so we can employ methods that improve the way those are done. There is space to do research. It's just that the phase that we have for the immediate intervention is short, but we have longer term engagement. Working with the research that's not been drafted by the students, but it's a research agenda that is created by the NGO. It's created by the practitioners. We've already seen schools <coughs> give executive MBAs, and for that, you do not have to go to the Commission of University Education. So there's no reason why we cannot develop executive masters of sciences in humanitarian work. When I think about collaboration with university and humanitarian organizations, sometimes it feels something like this cut that has been pulled by a cut. We don't know who's more important than the other, who's carrying the load, who's supposed to be where the other is. So it just feels like that's what we are, we are caught up in. The University of Nairobi 
is one of the premier learning institutions in Kenya and it has responded to the national, regional and Africa's high level training needs through diversified training programs. Save the Children inspires breakthroughs in the way the world treats children and works to achieve immediate lasting change in their lives. Um, we're looking in the future to try and build our research capacity to set up a fellowship so that practitioners can come right from the university, can come and teach, can come and publish. In the more recent past, another area which is really emerging is facilitating learning within a network organizations of partnership, uh, consortia, and we're doing this at global, regional, and local level. When the time for uh, collaborations come about, <coughs> the resources can actually be put in other areas so that uh, we avoid duplication and uh, not expand the model. I think the, the essence of partnership is that you go beyond your own experience and you just don't uh, promote what you are doing that is good, but you open up to appreciate what other people are doing that is good and see what you can learn from what they have. Uh, I don't want to measure and put in place to ensure that this certification actually does not affect the spirit of voluntarism. IRC have probably some 8 million volunteers worldwide through their local chapters in every country. And they have said what they would like to do is to be able to recognize their contributions. And so if a volunteer actually wants to be recognized for their contribution, that they should also have access to professional development and to be recognized. There are thousands of volunteers contributing to the humanitarian operations around the world and are qualified in that sense but lack the right academic accreditation and knowledge of what they have done or where they have worked. Stakeholders have repeatedly highlighted the need for volunteer corps to align the use of volunteers with the trend towards increasing professionalism in this sector. Although there are a number of challenges to improving partnership, academics and humanitarian practitioners do share a common goal. You've got the partnership there in the middle and the various um, components of the partnership. It is important to try and tease those out and you need to get to this, this spot for the shared objectives. So individual interests are, are very important and they do need to be taken into account. Um, you want to try and avoid going down to the lowest common denominator, um, but you do need to arrive at mutually agreed shared interests. Our first resolution is that we are making the humanitarian partnership conference an annual meeting in the What are we resolving around this process? how out of this conference collectively we can come with a shared taxonomy, a shared classification system. We shall ensure that the space is there for interactions, for disseminating this information, and we will be as open and transparent as possible. We sitting in this room commit to taking an extra step between this year and next year to have a partnership with, if you're a learning institution with an NGO, or the other way around, based on the added value that we've talked about to date. What we haven't really done is talk about the grey areas. We've spoken about, we've highlighted a few of the challenges that we think are hampering us doing good partnership programs. So we shall be looking at challenges here, and at the same point, trying to build solutions. In the institution, you find the organization lead and the career end moves on. Then the shared team dies away and the partnership dies. So if we got a platform for especially the academia and the NGOs so that the information is clearly flowing. We have this program, we want partners, and it is also an easy family. Yes, we can do this competition which we have really spoken about, we are competing even in the NGO world with one another. We have to be as competitive as possible to ensure when that proposal goes in, it has a high chance of funding.
it, it's happened. It's been an, a combined effort of very many people, um, a lot of time. Um, and within the last few months, especially, Jerry Miner has really championed um, looking for people interested to come. It's also a big uh, aspect of fi finance and even the partnerships that um, were crafted at the beginning uh, when Sheila was leading the team were very key. There are also very many challenges. You're looking at completely different cultures. We have research institutions that are both private sector and also institutional. You have um, the academia that are old institutions that have been there for years and some that are new, fresh, young and, and vibrant. Then you have the NGOs that have a completely different culture. To be able to merge that culture and actually get something going on the ground is key. So we will look to having a much better representation next time. Secondly, we would want next time to be a build up from this one. So we, we're not starting from scratch. It's to see from those who attended this one, what partnerships have they formed? Can they showcase them at the next conference? Um, could we have the same participants come and tell us what they've done differently in their work because of this conference? Um, there's also been suggestion to have uh, an opportunity to set up social media so that we can be talking as a group. Um, so we're going to try and do that, um, but with an aim towards um, ensuring that there's actually some result from here. We've planted a seed, we want to actually some results.